Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Wong. I'm a fifth year general internal medicine resident at the University of Alberta. I'm currently doing a POCUS fellowship under Dr. Irene Ma at the University of Calgary. Today we'll be talking about POCUS and cirrhosis. I have no disclosures to mention. Here are the objectives of the presentation. First, we'll go over what a normal liver looks like on ultrasound. Then we'll talk about POCUS findings suggestive of cirrhosis. And then we'll also talk about POCUS findings suggestive of portal hypertension. So what does a normal liver look like on ultrasound? So this is a clip of a normal liver. Notice the architecture of the liver. It's quite uniformly echogenic. And if you look at the margins, they're very smooth. What you'll also notice in a normal liver is these vessels that contain hyperechoic walls. These are portal veins. You'll also see vessels that lack hyperechoic walls, and these are hepatic veins. So we have the middle hepatic vein, we have the left hepatic vein, and these are draining into the IVC. This sign is also known as the Playboy Bunny sign for those who like trivia. This is a clip of blood flow in the main portal vein. In a normal liver, portal vein flow is hepatopedal, meaning it's towards the liver. Here you see the portal vein lit up in blue, moving away from the transducer towards the liver, which is located on the left side of this image. So that's pretty much it, what you'll see for a normal liver. Now, why don't we switch gears and talk about POCUS findings suggestive of liver cirrhosis. So this is a clip of a cirrhotic liver. A couple things to note here is that the liver itself is quite small. And if you look at the margins of the liver, it's very lumpy and bumpy. And this is what we'd call a nodular liver. Overall, its echogenicity is quite coarse as well, unlike a normal liver that's quite echogenic. You'll also notice that there's not great delineation of the intrahepatic vasculature as well. In addition, there's a little bit of free fluid here at the tip of the liver. Again here, a small a nodular cirrhotic looking liver. You actually get a little bit of va intrahepatic vascularity here, but again, not as well defined as a normal healthy liver. And again, you just see this liver floating in a bunch of ascites. Other findings that you might see in a cirrhotic liver actually is a hypertrophied caudate lobe. Normally in cirrhosis, the right lobe of the liver will atrophy and become very small and shrunken down. However, the caudate lobe actually might hypertrophy instead. And this is actually due to the dual blood supply that the caudate lobe receives. It gets blood supply from both the right and left hepatic artery and right and left portal vein. So that, that's it for POCUS findings of liver cirrhosis. However, with liver cirrhosis, often you will find portal hypertension as well. So let's go over some POCUS findings suggestive of portal hypertension. We've already covered this one, but with portal hypertension, you can get free fluid in the abdomen or ascites. This is an image of free fluid in the right upper quadrant. However, you can essentially get it anywhere in the abdomen, including left upper quadrant, left and right paracolid gutters, or in the pelvis. Another finding you can get with portal hypertension is splenomegaly. This is a clip of the left upper quadrant. And here you have this spleen that's quite large, and it extends past the inferior pole of the left kidney. And this is clearly abnormal. So this is a still clip of the left upper quadrant. And in this clip, the spleen is so large that we actually can't get it in one view. So I've extrapolated, and it measures about 15.5 centimeters. How you measure the spleen is, in the left upper quadrant, you want to identify its longest axis and take that measurement. Anything greater than 12 centimeters is considered splenomegaly. So this is a rather complicated slide. 
demonstrating the various portosystemic collateral pathways that a patient with portal hypertension may develop. A couple of these that you should be familiar with include the coronary vein or left gastric vein. So in a normal healthy adult, the coronary vein, the blood typically flows towards the main portal vein and towards the liver. However, in a patient with portal hypertension, what you may see is a dilated coronary vein with blood flow towards the stomach as opposed to the liver. Another important collateral to be familiar with is the umbilical vein collateral. As you're aware, the umbilical vein is important in embryologic development. The umbilical vein collateral typically shunts blood from the umbilical vein to the left portal vein of the liver. And from there, there's another shunt that will shunt the blood from the left portal vein to the right atrium of the heart. With birth, all these shunts no longer function and these vessels collapse. However, in patients with portal hypertension, these vessels may recannulate and become patent again with blood flow. The umbilical vein can be found in the anterior abdominal wall. And for completion's sake, you may see other collateral vessels as well, including gastroesophageal collaterals, gastroepiploic collaterals, splenorenal collaterals, and hemorrhoidal collaterals, or pancreatoduodenal collaterals. However, these are a little bit challenging to find on POCUS. So this is a still clip of blood flow through the left portal vein. Here it's showing up in red because it's flowing towards the transducer. Normally, blood flow through the left portal vein would not extend all the way to the distal aspect of the liver. What this image suggests is that there is recannulization of the umbilical vein. If we were to f follow this vessel to the abdominal wall and trace it down to the umbilicus, what we'll see is blood flow through a recannulized umbilical vein. This again is a finding suggestive of a portal hypertension. So this is a clip of a patient with cirrhosis and portal hypertension. What we're looking at here is the left upper quadrant. We have the spleen, the diaphragm, and you have a little bit of left pleural fluid. And here in the middle, we see dilated, tortuous vessels with blood flow. And notice with the colored opera that the blood flow is actually quite turbulent with aliasing. These are left upper quadrant collateral vessels uh, that you might see in someone with cirrhosis and portal hypertension. So I've included this slide more so for completion's sake. Many of these findings are likely outside the realm of POCUS and require advanced technical skills in abdominal ultrasonography and Doppler. Other vascular changes you can get with portal hypertension include a dilated portal vein greater than 1.3 centimeters, hepatofugal blood flow or blood flow away from the liver, and decreased portal vein velocity. With the hepatic artery, you might see an enlarged tortuous artery indicative of increased blood flow due to the poor blood flow from the portal vein. In the hepatic veins, you may see a non-triphasic waveform with loss of respiratory variation. Splenic vein changes you might see include a dilated left renal vein greater than 1.5 centimeters or dilated superior mesenteric vein greater than 1 centimeter. And as previously discussed already, you may see hepatofugal blood flow of the coronary vein or left gastric vein. All right, that's it. So take home messages from this presentation. A cirrhotic liver will appear small with nodularity. It will have coarse echo texture, and you might see a hypertrophied caudate lobe. Signs of portal hypertension include ascites, splenomegaly, portal systemic collaterals, and reversed portal blood flow. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions or comments, my email and Twitter handle are there. Also, don't forget to check out our website at www.cimus.ca. Special thanks to Dr. Irene Ma for helping me prepare this presentation.